Finally, after a 20-year wait, Ken Easley, one of the greatest football players ever to come out of Hampton Roads, put on the gold jacket given only to a select few. In Canton, Ohio tonight, his son Kendrick helps his dad slip it on, a jacket worn only by the members of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I'm Bruce Rader. Welcome to the Sports Wrap Live on this Friday night. The eve of Ken Easley's Hall of Fame induction, the Oscar Smith star, was one of the greatest high school players in Virginia history. And along with the likes of Kareem, Jackie Robinson, Bill Walton, and Arthur Ashe, he is one of the most decorated athletes in UCLA history. At tonight's Gold Jacket Ceremony, a national television audience reminded of his many gridiron feats. Focused and intense. He and I talked about his career and that Saturday night in Houston, the day before the Super Bowl, when the knock on the door came and Kenny got the news he had waited for for two decades. Knew instantly that this was what I was waiting for. And um, all of this, the anxiety, all of the stress, 20 years of waiting for this to happen just rolled off of me and man it was like I was in Disneyland. That brings back a flood of memories boy. Recruited by hundreds of colleges he wanted to play for Bo Schimbeckler at Michigan but Bo wanted Kenny to be the Wolverines quarterback. Easley said no he wanted to play defense. Well Bruce you know you know back in that day in that time uh, black quarterbacks weren't getting a lot of love coming out of high school and uh, if you were a good high school quarterback and you went uh, into the college ranks, they pretty much were either going to put you at running back or they were going to put you at wide receiver. And I didn't want to play either one of those positions. I knew I was a good defensive back. I was just a good athlete playing quarterback. Instead, on signing day, he stunned the country by going to UCLA, where he was a three-time All-American, predicted to be the first pick in the 1981 NFL Draft, and as we talked about in an interview 36 years ago, maybe the first defensive player to win the Heisman. The prospects of that happening, it's, it's really good. It's, it's not anything that... It's uh, unrealistic, anything like that. It can happen, and if it does happen, I'd be very, you know, very satisfied and very grateful. Well, I finished ninth in the voting, and uh, uh, there again, defensive players get no love for, from the Heisman voters because I truly believe in 1981, either Mike Singletary, Lawrence Taylor, or Kenny Easley should have won the Heisman Trophy. And because all three of those players dominated. And you, all you had to do is look at where they were drafted. Lawrence Taylor was drafted number two, I was four, and Singletary was six. He was the AFC Rookie of the Year, then the AFC Defensive Player of the Year, and then the NFL Defensive Player of the Year, becoming the highest paid defensive player in the league, making $800,000 on his way to four straight Pro Bowls. A severe kidney disease ended his NFL career after seven seasons, and now it's off to Canton. If I had gone in the, in the Hall of Fame in 1997, when I was first nominated, I probably... I, not probably, I know that I wouldn't have the respect for this moment that I have for it now. And that's a good thing because I am eternally grateful and I am immensely grateful for the senior committee taking a new look at the work that I did in the 80s and placed me in the Hall of Fame 20 years after that was all done. That's remarkable. And it just doesn't happen that often. There's a whole lot of guys that are in that senior, you know, in that senior division that are good players. And for them to take another like look at my career and choose me, can't tell you how that makes me feel.